Good morning and welcome back for our next lecture on transposable elements. Transposable elements are actually DNA sequences and these sequences can change their position from one chromosome, I mean from one position on one chromosome to another position on the same chromosome and sometimes they can also change their position from one chromosome to another chromosome. There are several names for these elements. These include selfish genetic elements. Sometimes they are also called as controlling elements. Very interestingly, jumping genes, mobile elements, transposomes, or even transposable elements. So mostly we shall use the name of transposable elements. So here is a scientist. Her name was Barbara McClintock. She was working on maize plant which we generally use for heating and uh, she was trying to understand some unusual phenotypes of maize plants in 1940s. Maize plant has 10 chromosomes and these chromosomes are named according to their size. The largest chromosome is named chromosome number one and similarly the smallest chromosome is named chromosome number 10. So what she found that one strain or one variety or one line, whatever you can call it, uh, one strain we can say, one strain of maize, in one strain of maize, uh, the chromosome number nine was breaking very frequently uh, at a particular point. I mean, when she observed this chromosome under microscope, she could see uh, one of the, uh, arms of the chromosome were broken and uh, she found that there was a particular sequence or element that was associated with this site of breakage. I mean when this element was present that chromosome had the probability of breakage. On the other hand she also identified another element called activation or activated element. So whenever this activator element was present in a plant strain, uh, the D locus, DS locus was capable of moving its, from its position and uh, activating or how to say, uh, generating a breakage in chromosome number nine. So we can see here, there are two elements which are associated with breakage of chromosome number nine. One of them is DS element, which is the site of chromosomal breakage and the other one is activated element which activates the breakage of chromosome but she was unable to map the position of activator element i mean she was unable to estimate whether this ac element was present on chromosome number one two or even in some other chromosome because whenever she tried to locate it in some plants, this element was present on, for example, one chromosome. And in some other plants, this uh, element was present on other, this element was present on some other chromosome. So it was impossible to map this AC element. So what made her believe of these transposable elements? Number one, because it was impossible to map AC. So she thought, okay, these elements can change their position. Number two was a real kernel's phenotype with dramatically different phenotypes. Uh, they were, could be observed or derived from original stream that had frequent breaks in chromosome number nine. What does it mean? It means there was a chromos uh, plant strain and in that plant strain, the chromosome number was breaking several times. So when they obtained the offspring of this plant, and in, in those offsprings of this plant, they could observe kernels with different phenotypes. And import, most importantly, they could also observe uh, colorless, some colorless uh, seeds with pigments. So here we can see there are three different types of seeds of this maize uh, cob. 
one is the colorless seeds the other one is pigmented seeds and the last one is spotted seeds where uh, pigment spots are present on colorless background so let's try to understand uh, how these phenotypes are produced here it is a representation of chromosomes of maize plant chromosome 1 and 2 actually these are homologous chromosomes so we can see there are some points on these chromosome ds represents dissociation factor and these wx sh and c represents three different alleles or three different genes we you can say from them wx when it is present in its dominant form it can produce shiny seeds similarly when sh is present in its dominant form it can produce plump or fluffy type of seeds similarly if c element is present in its dominant form it can produce pigmented seeds on the other hand when these dominant forms are not present and only the recessive forms of these alleles are present it gives to different phenotypes for example when it is uh, uh, how to say the recessive form of wx the seeds are not shiny they are shrunken and uh, also colorless so due to the presence of ds element this chromosomal arm is broken at this point and uh, along this arm it also carries the dominant forms of these alleles ultimately the recessive alleles they become activated and they give rise to the other phenotype which is colorless shrunken and not shiny seed okay so i repeat when these sequences or these alleles dominant alleles are present the seed is pigmented plump and shiny and when these dominant forms are broken separated from the chromosome and only recessive forms are present they give rise to the other form other phenotypes which are colorless shrunken and not shiny seeds so we can see we have colorless seeds and pigmented seeds so what about the third type of seeds that we observe there are seeds with pigmented spots with colorless background so actually what happens the ds element it can change its position from its locus and it can insert itself into the c uh, allele which is dominant form and it produces pigments so when this ds is inserted in this c allele this c allele cannot perform its function and ultimately the seed becomes colorless at that position so in the next cellular divisions and the cells further divide this ds element can change its position and it can leave the c allele and move to somewhere else what happens the c allele which has lost its function now it can reperform its function and when it reperforms its function the colored spots or pigment spots reappear so in this way we get a phenotype of seeds uh, with pigmented spots on colorless background so do not forget that the ac element is always there to activate the movement of ds elements so actually there are two different types of these alleles Uh, these transposable elements one of them is called autonomous elements so obviously autonomous elements do not need others for their mobility for example the ac or activator element they can act as uh, transposable element they can move their position from one locus to another and they can move themselves on the other hand non autonomous elements always need other elements other factors for their mobility 
for example, DS element, which always needs this activator element. So DS element cannot move itself from one locus to another locus. Okay. So one may ask a question, so uh, whether transposable elements are present only in maze? The answer is no, because transposable elements are present in almost all organisms. Now they have been detected uh, genetically in several organisms like E. coli, maize, yeast, Drosophila and other, and other model plants by process of mutations. So let's discuss uh, transposable elements in lower and higher organisms separately. First, we shall start with prokaryotes. So in prokaryotes, there are two broad categories of transposable elements. One of them is called insertion sequences and the other one is called transposomes. So what are insertion sequences? Insertion sequences are actually shorter sequences. They are only 800 to 13, 50 base pairs long. There are some other variations, okay? So it is gen just an average number of sequences. So these elements can only code one protein and that protein is an enzyme called transposase. Transposase are those enzymes that can move IS elements to new position. So only, so these sequence contain only one gene. That gene is capable of coding transposase enzyme and that transposase enzyme can move this sequence from one position to another position. So as I, I have told, the, these elements contain only transposases and they do not carry other genes that are required for their movement. On the other hand, transposomes are usually longer sequences, thousands of base pairs long, as compared to these IS elements. They, obviously, they are multi, uh, thousands of uh, base pairs of sequences, so they contain multiple genes, including transposase enzymes. So there are transposase enzymes, and there are some other genes which can perform other functions as well. Okay, for example, the other gene, transposase, I, as I have told, transposase is responsible for movement of genes. And the other genes, like uh, they can, uh, they are, they can be involved in antibiotic drug resistance, for example, R factors. Similarly, in eukaryotes, there are two major classes of transposable elements, which are called retrotransposomes and DNA transposomes. So I think this is enough for this lecture and uh, we shall see uh, these two types of uh, transposable elements in eukaryotes in our next lecture. Thank you.